Hey folks, it's me, Pastor Daniel Smack of St. Louis Mega Church. <laughs> now I know I look like a rock star, but I can promise you I'm just a regular guy living by the gospel, living in my multi-million dollar mansion with my super hot wife. <laughs> Speaking of my super hot wife, Pastor Alexis Smack is over at our Fenton campus teaching a class on wife subserviency. <laughs> Why don't we check in with old sexy Lexi now? Lex, are you there? <laughs> oh, Daniel, my sweet and funny, caring husband, you're such a pistol. I'm so happy to be sharing my Lady Eden with you. Oh, thank you, obedient wife. <laughs> now, folks, I know my designer clothes, super cool frosted tips, and playful uncle-like jokes make me relatable. But don't forget, I serve a higher power. Money! <laughs> Oh, 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 not just money, baby girl. I'm preaching the prosperity. Oh, baby's talking about jewelry. Not just jewelry's cuckoo bird. <laughs> prosperity is something within us all, and I can promise you for everything you give on a very, very vague timeline will be revisited upon your home tenfold. <laughs> And that is a guarantee from our Lord and Savior, Mr. Jesus Christ himself. Oh, God is so good, baby. Isn't our God so good? Indeed, indeed, indeed he is. Indeed he is, but no guarantees except this guarantee. I guarantee you for every $100 you give to St. Louis Mega Church, I will send you a personal handwritten photocopied letter asking you for more. Give us your pennies, all of your pennies. We've got nine planes and 15 vacation homes. Oh, honey, we don't like to call them vacation homes. What we like to call them are Christian satellite funded retreats. But don't be misled by the dark one, folks. Don't go hiding all that sweet, sweet cash in some sort of savings account. Please help the Lord help us hide all of our funds in an offshore account. That's right, folks. We got nothing to hide. Just dig deep, deep, deep into your wallets and your hearts and give, give, give until it hurts, hurts, hurts. Just open your wallet. Losing faith in late night television? From the Schlafly Beer Studios at the Marcel Theater in the heart of Grand Center, it's a deal of Sorry, Bobby J. Cox. Easter, the funkiest man in the land. Yes, thank you. Oh, man. Oh, guys, uh, I'm excited that you guys are here. Uh, we're going to talk about what's going on in St. Louis and elsewhere. This is definitely elsewhere. Uh, I don't know if you guys probably watched it, but American Idol uh, said farewell after being on the air for 15 years. Finally. Man, finally. 
<laughs> Many of the cast and crew are ready to get back to their lives, and host Ryan Seacrest says he plans to take a break from Hollywood and hang out with Ryan Dunkelman a little bit more. <laughs> yes. I'm just pretty sure those guys came out of the same cloning tube. Uh, the, uh, guys, the famous Bevo Mill windmill is for sale. You guys, you can buy it. Uh, structurally, the building is in great shape, but the neighborhood does have a problem with a confused homeless man loitering around the windmill. So, <laughs> a little literary reference for you folks. <laughs> Uh, some sports news here. The winner of the 2015 St. Louis Marathon was stripped of her title when it was discovered that she was on a banned substance. Yeah, stripping her of her title was actually much easier than stripping her of her 26.2 sticker on the back of her Honda Pilot. <laughs> you, know, you got a razor blade in there and you got a goof off. You use the goof off. <laughs> Not sponsored by goof off. Uh, has anybody uh, ridden the ride, the Screaming Eagle at Six Flags? Oh yeah. You guys been on that? Yeah! yeah. Yes, I'm excited, this guy. You did it today? Yeah! And then you're gonna love this joke. Whoa. <laughs> uh, well, the ride is celebrating its 40th anniversary this week. Uh, and many, maybe you sir, reminisced about taking their first dates to the park when it opened. And uh, to, to commemorate those moments, they now have changed the ride to the Creamin' Eagle. <laughs> it's like... It's late night TV, folks. It's late night TV. I can say cream and eagle. Purell. Uh, the Sunset Hills uh, Hampton Inn Hotel had to be evacuated on Friday because there was a, uh, it might have been a carbon monoxide leak. And they said it, it, the cause is unknown, but they believe this dad who just ate Fuddruckers might be to blame. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, those, there's, there's no bubble jets in that uh, hot tub. It's right? <laughs> a weird foam. Can we go back to that? Can you go back to that cute? Can we go back to that really quick? There's, look at that foam. Oh. Got, it's, a, it's definitely a weird foam, and there's something black slipping into the tub, I think. I don't know what's going on there? Uh, anyway, a, a new poll uh, shows that seven out of ten Americans don't like Donald Trump. Don't like it. Ooh, yeah. Sounds about right. Prompting Ted Cruz to say, oh, dang, I wish my numbers were that good. <laughs> Is that a terrible Ted Cruz? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Can't get his face right. It's probably, probably good. Uh, the Tennessee legislator approved a bill to make the Bible the official state book. It was, a, it was a close vote. Uh, the, my, the Bible narrowly beat out everybody poops, green eggs and ham, and 75 other versions of the Bible. So it was just, one of them was just pictures. <laughs> the picture Bible book, it's, they exist. Uh, this is big news. Bernie Sanders was invited to the Vatican by the Pope himself, which is, yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, that's, Huge news for Bernie's campaign, but not as huge as the nap they're both gonna take afterwards. There are two old dudes. Spooning with Bernie. Guys, we have a great show for you guys tonight. Eric, there's, there's something on your, on your forehead there. What? Right, right there above. Did I get it? Yeah, yeah. Did I get it? Wait a minute, wait a minute, it's back. Wait, where is it? Right. What, is it a bug? What's no, going no, on? No, 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 it's like a red dot. Okay, like well, from it's, a, it's like a laser sighter from a rifle. Okay, is it, it's gone? Dude, you look a little nervous. Yeah. I mean, have you, have you pissed anybody off? No. Is there like a whole community that's gunning for you? <laughs> no. Want to see an end to you? No, man, that's ridiculous, No, Bob. it isn't. I'm talking like mobsters. I'm talking like, you know, hitmen, the whole bit. Bob, that, that is silly, man. There's, there's nothing going on, all right? There's absolutely... <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> That misplaced sandbag nearly took you out, man. I'm telling you, somebody is out to get you. They got a hit on you, man. Bob, I, I'm fine, I'm right. Are you sure you didn't like go to LA, start a rap career, a burgeoning rap career, get down with a couple of brothers there? Then you made your way over to the East Coast, right? You hook up with a couple of brothers there, you're laying down some tracks, the buddies back in SoCal get wind of this crap, and then suddenly there's a war erupts. Damn, between the West and the East Coast, defining the rap of the 90s. Are you sure that wasn't you? No, 
No, no, man, that wasn't me. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, son of a god! I'm telling you, they're out to. Oh. Uh. Uh. Uh, well, uh, uh, Bob, I guess, had to take a nap. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. Guys, we have a great show for you tonight. Charmaine Savage is here from I Am East St. Louis Magazine. Followed by four four twos. Stick around, this is Estee LaBlake. Alla witches is the original. Got a bum, I said, now it's digital. Rock hard all day. If you ain't gon' fall, get the hell out the way. to do one of my favorite segments of all time, Festive Feline Faces. But before we get into that, uh, I just I gotta take a second because my, my water is real weird. I just, I, it's, look, it's looking strange. So uh, can I get another water real quick? Oh. Just real quick. Yeah, thank you. Here you go, Eric. All right, perfect. Eric, this water is the color of Windex. Yes, blue, like water. <laughs> yeah, but water isn't supposed to be this blue. This looks more poisony. You didn't, like, offer to move 50 kilos of cocaine by commercial airliner for Mexican drug lord El Chapo, but then you decided to take the drugs, the money, and El Chapo's most beautiful wife to the wetlands of Fiji instead, thus causing El Chapo to swear on his abuela's grave that he's had your dead body hanging over a bridge. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> what? No, no, no. <laughs> well, then good. You oh, should be fine. Oh, good. <laughs> that would be an amazing story, though, wouldn't it? Yeah, right, right. Chapo. Right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> yep, okay. yep. Well, have a great segment, Eric. Thank you. Oh, oh good. Okay, you've been working hard. You, you, you rest for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, sorry about that, everybody. Uh, let's get back into my favorite segment of all time, Festive Feline Faces. Whoa! Eric! What's hate up? to interrupt, though, dude, because I was digging that intro. But there is, like, a ninja sneaking up behind you, man. What? I, I, look, I, it's not... It's not a ninja anywhere that I, I can see, all right? So... Well, that's because he's, like, right directly behind you, man. And look, I... Can't see his face, but I'm a real good reader of body language. <laughs> he looks pissed, man. Okay, I think enough he wants with to the conspiracies. You, no, enough with the conspiracy theories, man. Wait, were you involved in some sort of secret plot conspiracy with the government what? to no. kill our 35th president? No. John F. Kennedy in Dallas, Texas? <laughs> to silence him about the situation in Cuba? And then. Stuff started to go wrong and people saw too much. So they pinned it all on Lee Harvey. Well, you in this scenario, but you were shot in the chest while in custody, leading to one of the most craziest unsolved mysteries in American history. <laughs> no, 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 I didn't, what? <laughs> That, that, that little scamp helped them to go to sleep, I guess. <laughs> Just, uh, everybody's sleeping. Uh, well, we've run out of time for festive feline faces. Maybe we'll get to it next week. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. Uh, do we have any Walking Dead fans in the audience? Yeah! As you probably know, last weekend was the season six finale, and there were a lot of fans that were pretty upset with the cliffhanger ending. Yeah. <laughs> well, tonight, AMC has given us an exclusive permission to interview the beloved character that was killed off in last weekend's season finale. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, here he is. I'm sorry, uh... How's it my, going? Yeah, good. Uh, my cards are saying Tad? You That's are, right. You're Tad from The Walking Dead? Spoilers! Spoilers, Eric. <laughs> good to be here, good to be here. Uh, I, I'm sorry, Tad, I don't recognize you from the show. Oh, okay, well that's that's probably because I, I play a, a, a general maintenance character, okay? It, 
I, I clean up Alexandria, make sure it's nice and clean. I, I, I stack the dead bodies when there are some, you know. Make sure everybody has can openers, that kind of thing. Okay, I, I don't recognize you from the show at all. It seems like I would have seen you at some point. Oh, well, actually, uh, I brought a little something with me. Uh, this is a uh, screen grab from an episode I was okay, in. Okay, all right. Uh, all right, what? <laughs> Wait, which, which one are you? I'm right there, Eric. Where? Right there! Where? I'm underneath the tank. What? <laughs> yeah, I was hot wiring it so me and Rick could get the heck out of there. Uh, all right, uh, well, I just, I, I don't remember a general maintenance man from The Walking Dead. It oh. just doesn't. Well, look, Eric, you, look, you ever wonder how, uh, any place these, these guys go, uh, they, they always have like power? Yeah, I mean, sometimes, yeah. I mean, yeah. well, Alexandria had solar panels, so yeah, that yeah. explains that. Well, nuh uh. Not when it's dark outside. <laughs> I I'm the one in the back pedaling a bicycle, keeping the generator going. <laughs> That's you? Well, at least it used to be, because now I'm dead. All right, perfect, all right. Well, it just seems like I, I would remember a general maintenance man on The Walking Dead, okay? Just. Oh, well, look. For instance, uh -huh. all right? Herschel's farm. Uh -huh. How'd they mow the grass? <laughs> fair point, fair point, fair point. That was me. Yeah? <laughs> that was me. I kept it up. Well, at least it used to be. <laughs> and now I'm dead. Okay. It, They're going to be in some pretty tall weeds come next season. I mean, it, it just seems a little crazy that, that you were the guy behind all of this. Oh, look, right? look. You ever, you ever notice how they never have any dirty dishes? <laughs> yeah. 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 You, you ever notice how there isn't just blood everywhere? <laughs> sure. I, I had to go find something other than club soda to get the blood out of the upholstery. Where, where am I gonna find club soda? I'm like, I don't wanna live like that, not even in the apocalypse. Well, and guess what, I don't, cause I'm dead! Yeah, okay, perfect. Uh, well, I, 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 I'm sorry, but it just seems a little implausible. In fact, uh, where is that accent coming from? Oh, this, uh, I'm from Hoboken, Georgia. What? <laughs> okay, all right, well. So, it, I, I just think that I would have seen you at some point with the gang, Rick and those guys doing something, that you would have been in some episodes other than under a tank. It's uh, funny, funny that you should bring that up, Eric. Uh, I, I was cut out of every episode, what? except for the one with the tank. Yeah, it's uh, pretty sad. So they cut you out of every episode except for the final one where you were killed off, your character was killed off? That's right. Well, I was one of the characters killed off. What do you, wait, one of the characters killed off? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I died uh, off screen. I died off screen. <laughs> How do you like that? Yeah, Negan, uh, he came into the RV where I, I was patching bullet holes, uh -huh. like I do. Uh -huh. <laughs> I didn't see a chance. I got old Lucille here in the head. Wait, 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 Lucille, wait. But didn't he use this bat later? Yeah, he did. This is Lucille too. He's got tons of Lucilles. Okay, all right. Uh, well, I'm sorry, then if you weren't the one at the end of the episode who was killed, we saw somebody being killed on screen, who was it? I don't know. I was definitely off screen. <laughs> dead as a doornail. Dead, 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 dead. <laughs> who was the person? I don't know, you got any theories? No, I don't! Come on, you got any fan theories? No, fan it's theories? Tad from The Walking Dead, everybody. <laughs> My guest tonight is the editor and publisher of the magazine I Am ESTL, which aims to shine a spotlight on the positive things happening in East St. Louis. Please welcome my guest from across the river, Charmaine Savage, everybody. <laughs> Charmaine, thanks, thanks for coming over to the show. Thanks for having I me. I really appreciate it. Uh, we found you, uh, we heard about you on St. Louis Public Radio, the awesome okay. things you're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, the magazine is looking great. I just read this issue not too long ago. It's awesome. Um, so, I mean, you guys, you're, you're changing kind of what's going on and I, I love what you're doing because I, I don't think it's much different than what we're trying to do on this show, okay. which is show people 
uh, that there is in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. uh, awesome people doing amazing work around this area. Right. And to bring pride to St. Louis. And for you, it's East St. Louis. Right. So how has this magazine so far been received by the residents of East St. Louis? How, oh my God, very enthusiastic. Yeah? Yes, people love it. Um, they are excited because this is the East St. Louis that they know. Yeah. And so people have been, um, uh, people have started to believe the images yeah. that are on Google and the things that have been said in the media like the about East St. Louis, the negative things. Right. And so this just brings the pride back. So you think like maybe it's like it's like they know that they love where they live, absolutely. but the, the media and the things that they hear all the time mm -hmm. that negatively impacts them. Yes. Uh, and so this you think is, is helping kind of like reshape that or, or enforce that? Absolutely. Cool. Mm -hmm. um, well, yeah, I mean, uh, the things that I've read and hear, uh, I mean, it was a surprise to me and, and I think it can be a catalyst for change. Uh, and the, the articles in here, what do you see it doing in terms of changing East St. Louis? Like, what are some ways it actually could change East St. Louis? Well, what my um, intent for it is to um, to change the image of, mm -hmm. of the city and to show people what we are really about. But ultimately, what I want to happen is for developers and investors yeah. and people like that to see that, okay, this, there is a different part, right. different side of East St. Louis that we there didn't know to, about. There's something positive to there's build some positive on things. in St. Louis. Absolutely. East St. Louis. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. And, and you think that is something that down the road that you'll start to see is like developers come over, maybe put in an apartment complex or, or, or kind of redevelop some yeah, of the downtown yeah. area in East and St. Louis. And the thing about it is there's some of that that's already there. But right. most people who are not in the city and who are not, uh, who don't frequent the city, don't even know that there is um, housing, mm -hmm. you know, more um, more beautiful housing right. than right, they right. think is in East St. Louis. They're being so, shown the negative right. side of it. Here is what, you know, the, the bad part of East St. Louis. Absolutely, absolutely. And you want to show that side of it where there is nice housing and there is Absolutely. positive things going on. Yes, I, and if people go to the website, they'll see all the images I, I did. that the, are the on the parks, website. There's yes. a beautiful parks that you yeah. showcased on the yeah. website that I went All of those there. images were taken in East St. Louis. Yeah, I mean, there's yes. kids playing out on baseball mm -hmm. fields, a mm -hmm. beautiful baseball field there. Yes. Uh, and yeah, the, the parks really struck me. I was like, man, I got to check out some of the parks over That's there. That's the same park that I played in when I was a little girl. And you are yes. originally from that. You moved away from yes. East St. Louis. Yes. I was in the Navy. I was in the Navy you for 21 everywhere. years. Um, all over the country. You went I to did. Iraq for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I was in you, you served your country. Yes. You served your country, yes. and now you're here to serve your city. Absolutely. Yeah. That's the uh, and it's it's incredible. Well, I was reading this this issue, uh, and I came across an article with Brian Cox. Yes. Who I I've been a football fan all my life, okay. NFL football fan. I had no idea he was from East St. Louis. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And so those are the kinds of things that we can expect. Yeah, there are so many amazing. Um, not just athletes, but scholars mm -hmm. that we're going to be talking about in the magazine that we have been talking about. Uh, the first issue featured the 15th uh, U.S. Ambassador to the U.N., Donald McHenry. Cool. He's from East St. Louis, uh, was raised there. Um, you know, this issue, you know, you had Brian Cox, Conzo mm -hmm. Martin, who mm -hmm. was the coach of uh, Cal Berkeley men's and basketball. Purdue, right? Um, like, yeah, he was at he was at Purdue. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. there's so many names that are going through this magazine that I recognize. Yes. I was like, man, yes. these people are from East St. Louis. I had yes. no idea. Yes, it's awesome that you have this publication showing people that. Yes, and, and there's going to be awesome. more. Cool, and you've got there's something coming more. up in, in arts. Uh, yes, so event. the July issue, the theme is arts and entertainment, mm -hmm. and so we're going to have a, uh, a big arts and entertainment celebration at the Catherine Dunham Museum uh, on July 3rd. Um, it's going to be amazing. We're going to have gotcha. vendors there. I, yes. I saw the video for your launch party, and it looked like it was a ton of fun. It's going to be more exciting be than, than that. that. Yes. All right. Absolutely. Well, I will hold you to that. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, check out the website, imestl.com, and pick up an issue that's on the stands now. Ladies and gentlemen, my guest, Charmaine Savage. <laughs> Welcome back. 
Uh, oh, oh, uh, yeah. uh, hold on a second. Davey, you've been trying to kill me this whole time? Yeah, Eric, uh, last weekend at the writer's meeting, you took my favorite pen. <laughs> this pen? Yeah! Are we good? We're good. Ladies and gentlemen, the 442s! <laughs>
up their fundraising campaign for their next album on their website, the442s.com, and see them at the Chess Hall of Fame on April 27th. From all the cast and crew at SEO Blade, we want to say good night. Yeah.